good deeds in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. I'm going to be reading Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May God add a blessing to the, read, the hearers and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Sister Patricia and Brother Ben, for um, praying us in, um, and Sister Patricia for reading that scripture. That is, the word is so powerful and it's so necessary, and it meets us where we are. Um, I can tell you that I am so grateful that we remember that our Lord, we do everything as unto him. We don't, even when we go to work, Brother Peter, we're doing it as unto him. We're doing it to bring him glory, not ourselves, but to him. So God, we ask you just to continue to be with us in this service. As we minister in song, do you know that he is your strength? Strength like no other. Why? Because he reaches to us. He's from heaven's throne. He reaches down to us here at earth below. We're so grateful. Hallelujah.
over. That your blood will never lose its power. That's why you are our great God.
for her amazing life and she was such a gift not only to our family but to the world and she was an evangelist and she brought the word and uh, she brought our family together over the years and so I'm just so thankful for her life and and this shows you that you, know, you can still worship God and praise God even in the storm right? Amen. even in challenges right. you can find God so today I'm going to be speaking about a blessing in the fire right. man Okay, I think about fire, you know, when you think about fire, it's hot, right? And who wants to go through fire? You ever see people walk on coals before? I'm sure you've seen that, like, with, uh, I forgot that guy's name, Tony Robbins. They're walking on fire. I ain't trying to do that. I'm not trying to walk on fire, but I've been through some fire in my life. Some people call it storm, some people call it fire, but I've been through it in my life, and I know you've been through fire yourself and if you are alive and breathing and well and can speak and hear me now you can be a witness that God has brought you through the fire right Amen. 
He's brought you through the challenges and the storms of your life. So I'm going to talk about that today. I'll talk a little bit about the three Hebrew boys, but mostly I'm going to talk about my own personal life and how God has brought me through the fire. And if you are in the fire today, know that you can get through the fire and that there is a blessing in the fire. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for this time right now. God, we ask that you drop your word in us, God. Let your anointing fall on us, God. God, remove every weight, every care, everything that we are thinking about. Let us focus on your word, God. And let us receive what you have for us today, God. Let your anointing fall upon us, God. We rebuke Satan in the name of Jesus, for we know that he is busy, even right now, God. He is busy, so we rebuke him in the name of Jesus. And God, we just we call on you, Lord, right now to rest and reign in this place. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so our scripture for today is Romans 8, 28. Camille's going to put that up on the screen. Amen. 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 Praise God. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and call according to his purpose. Everything, not some things, but everything, everything we experience in life will work together for the good of those that are called by God. If you love him, it's going to work out. It will. Everything will work out for its good. If you just think about your life and the things that you've gone through and how God turned that thing around, he worked it out, right, for your good. So we're going to talk about that. Now, some of you know the, the story of the three Hebrew boys and, and Daniel and uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? That's right. Amen. And the king wanted them to bow to him because, you know, we got our own gods. We got our God. Mm-hmm. Right. You're going to bow down. And they were like, no, we're not. And so they were thrown into the fire. Mm-hmm. And let's think about it. Have you ever been thrown in the fire? Sometimes by God's design, sometimes by your own design. That's right. By others' design, we've been thrown into the fire. But something amazing about these three men that were in the fire is their boldness to stand firmly on the word of God. To stand firmly on who God is and what God could do in the fire. fire. No one in their life could be gone like that. But even in the fire, even at like 125, just think, remember that one day when the power went out and it was hot in the church? Yeah. And we was dying? That ain't nothing compared to some fire on your body. But they stood on God's word and his promises and the authority of God to know that God was going to deliver them without a shadow of a doubt. When we are in our life, sometimes the things happen, depending on how the level of craziness it is, a little bit of doubt starts creeping in. Right? It's, 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 it's real life. Especially when it's out of your control. That's when doubt really starts creeping in. That's when our faith starts wavering. Is when things are out of our control, we can't control it with money. Then we're like, oh, or those things that we haven't released to God that, oh, God, you can fix this problem, but this one is way too big for you. That's when we start freaking out. Yes, all right. We start losing it. We start grabbing at other things. I know friends that are going through some situations, and they, they love Jesus. But the moment they started going through a fire or a storm, they started grabbing on other things. Let me grab crystals. Maybe that will do it. Let me grab some sage. Maybe that will do it. Let me do the moon. Let me do the numbers. Let me do all this stuff. Maybe that will conjure up something that will fix my life. But what happened to God? Right. If he fixed your stuff back then, if he turned your life around back then, why can't he do it now? Amen. Why are you not trusting him in this situation? You know he can turn it around. It is written in his word. And that's what we do as believers. We start drawing from other sources when we get scared and nervous when God is not on our time. All right. Where are you, God? Mm-hmm. It's been a month. How come you haven't fixed this yet? Oh, my. Right. You said you're all powerful. I've been good, God. Me and my sister talk about that. I've been a good Christian, God. I ain't never did nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? I don't hardly ever sin. What is the problem? 
right? We get there. And God is like, you know what? Sometimes this is by my design. I'm trying to show you some things. I'm trying to grow you in the area. I'm trying to develop some things within you. I am refining you. Think about the three key boys that were in the fire. They were being refined. That's where we are in our lives. Sometimes we go through challenges. When God allows things to happen or by his design, or even just things that just happen because we live in a fallen world, God can still use that for our good. Yes. He is refining. Sometimes God has to allow things to happen in your life to draw you nearer to him. Because you far away. And I'm going to have to let some things happen in your life so you can come closer to me. Because right. I got some things that I want to tell you about your life. And you're not listening to me because you got a lot of distractions going on. Yeah. So I'm going to allow this thing to happen so that you can draw near to me. Because right. mm -hmm. remember, he is our father. And he loves us and he cares about us. And like my dad used to say, he has a wonderful plan for your life. But when we get off track, when we are not doing God's will, sometimes he allows things to happen to pull us back in. Yeah. Yeah. But yet there still is a blessing in the fire. Right. So the three Hebrew boys that were in there and, and you know, they're in the furnace and, and the king, he looks back and he sees a fourth and that was God in the fire with them. Yes. God will be in the fire with you. Do not think everything in your life, if you believe in Jesus, that you are walking alone. Because you are not walking alone. That's right. That's right. It may feel like it, but you are not walking alone. He is there. Amen. In the middle of the night, even when your friends are gone, even if your parents have passed away, even if people walk away from you, God is always there. Amen. He is carrying you. And sometimes we allow circumstances to isolate us from other believers and we're walking alone and God is like, I'm, I'm here. I am here. I care for you. So he saw them. He saw God in the fire and he released them. Yes. They were released. And there's no other God. Let's serve that God. Not our gods, but that God. So let me talk about my life. Before I was a musician, well, let me not say that. I was a musician. My dad was a pastor. Right? All my brothers and sisters were a musical family. All my brothers and sisters knew how to play. But since I'm the baby of the family, my daddy needed a musician. He said, I'm going to make her stay with these lessons. And so my mom would go with me uh, to piano lessons, and, and I hated it the whole entire time. All the way up till I was a teenager. I could not stand it. But I'm glad that my parents kept me in it because I love it. Because my dad saw something in me. He saw that in me. So, uh, while I was a musician, um, and I was working, and I was playing at three churches, I began to develop carpal tunnel in my hands. And so, during that time, I was like, ah, I can't play no more because my hands would be frozen. And that was my living. I was doing that professionally. I had a daughter. I had a mortgage. But my hands started really bothering me a lot. And I couldn't play anymore. And I had to let some positions go. And that's when the trouble started happening. My God, why are you, why are you allowing this? He's like, I had a plan. I was like, okay. And then my house went into foreclosure. And I'm like, what am I going to do? And I had to go on a three-day fast with straight up just water so I can hear from God. Laying on my face before the Lord, asking God, what are you doing? I don't understand this. Like, this is where you've always had me be, is in church and playing. And he's like, I have to remind you, Amanda, that I am your source, not your resource. Come on. And I had put God in a different position. I was out of alignment with God because I thought, okay, I got these I'm making money, I'm doing my thing. God said, no, guess what? I am your source, not your resource. 
So I was going through that trial and I, I asked like, I gotta get a job, I gotta take care of my kid. And so the Lord blessed me to get a job at a residential treatment facility where I was an admin. And on this job, I had a several different positions in different departments, but they all were admin. And so I ended up in this last position. Had a great boss, he was a great guy. Um, and then he decided that he wanted to move to another department. So grab my ceiling, great, love you. I got a new boss, and that's when the fire began. Now, I thought I was already out. Yeah, I was like, okay, God, you gave me a job, or we got that fire. He's like, no, but I got another one for you. You're going to go through the fire again. So I got this boss. Ugh. Eight months of chaos with this man that put me through so much stuff. I'm a good worker, wrote me up a couple of times, trying to throw me underneath the bus with the CEO. It was just a mess. He treated me so bad. And I prayed to God, I said, God, look, I cannot stay in this position. I'm about to lose it. I need to find another job. Do you know that God would not let me find another job? <laughs> stay in the fire. Stay in the fire. Okay. I got some things I want to do in you. And so for eight months, eight months, I was going through some stuff with this man. Eight months of being written up and, and lied on and, and going through all these trials with this man, I felt that God had deserted me, that he didn't care about me. I'm like, God, what are you doing? So instead of fighting, I said, you know what? I said, God, you're, you're trying to do something to me, so I'm not going to kick against a prick, as they said. I'm not going to fight it. I'm just going to go through the fire, and I'm going to trust you. So I said that. And then at that time, I found that God was perfecting something in me or developing something within me. And around that same time, he said, I don't want you to be under me no more. I can't deal with you as an employee. I'm going to put you underneath somebody else. <laughs> so he gave me a new supervisor, still under his department. And it was the executive assistant to the CEO. And I was like, okay, God, what are you doing? So she was on me. And that's when I started to see how God was unfolding things in the fire for me. In that time frame, my dad got cancer in November of 2009. And I was working at the same job, had the same supervisor that worked with the CEO. My dad had cancer just out of nowhere. Came to church one day, we had a meeting with the ministers. He sat down, tried to get up, couldn't get up. Um, and he couldn't walk him. We had to walk him to his car. And so he went to the hospital and we found out your dad has four stage cancer. I'm like, what? What is going on? Oh, God. I'm in this terrible job. My daddy got cancer. My hands is all jacked up. What are you doing? And so that was the hardest time in my life where I didn't understand what God was doing. And I, I didn't realize that I was going through the refinement All right. process. So all that suffering and all those challenges, God used them for my good. Yes. Here we go, February 2010. My dad only survived four months with four stage cancer. Gone like that. But in that time period before he got cancer, he came to my job because I told him so much about the CEO. Now, my dad was a great, great man, very well-known pastor, loved to mentor men, very well-known in the community. He wanted to come up to my job to meet the CEO. And they were like, oh, man. He came up there. We had lunch with the CEO, the CFO, and some other executives. And they gave him a tour. And they just, I mean, they fell in love with my dad prior to him having cancer just in those few months. They fell in love with him. When he died, every last one of them were at his funeral. They didn't even know him, but they, they just honored him and they adored who he was as a person. So God was doing something with my dad and his dad and the CEO. Didn't understand it. What are you doing about? I don't know. So after that, two months or less after my dad had passed away, the CEO was like, you know, I think we can find a better position for you within the company. And this, I'm going through eight months of hell, y'all. I'm serious. Eight 
wanted to fly her for real. I got another place for you in mind. I said, okay, all right, all right, I see you. So I, I was praying. I was like, oh, what are you doing? Like, I was nervous and scared, but now since, since I'm going through this fire, I, I begin to trust him a little bit more. Yeah. My faith was increased. I got in my word. I prayed more. I worshiped more. I listened to worship music. I counted on the support of my church family, of other believers, to get me through this stuff that I was in. This fire that I was in. So, the CEO came to me through other recommendations of other people on the campus. It was like, you know what? There's a position available. There's somebody in it right now, but due to some other circumstances, we're going to let them go. But we want you to be the chaplain. We want you to be over the pastoral care for the whole entire campus. And gave me that position. Salary, made my own schedule, got my own chapel, got my own office, all of that. And I looked back and I said, Wow, God, you want me to go through that eight months of hell with this supervisor because you wanted to grow me up spiritually. You wanted me to be able to know to depend on you and learn how to pray because I needed to be prepared for the boy. The young men that I was going to be ministering to. There's no way that I personally would have done those things without being pushed by God to do that. So God, through the fire, was refining me for this position. And I'm like, wow, thank you, God. Because I wouldn't have been able to handle praying for the campus that was going through a crisis and stuff that was seeing on the news about kids being molested. And, and things of that sort, and these kids that grew up in very bad trauma situations that I was able to minister to them only because God had put me through the fire to make me ready for that position. And so that's what God will do in your life. Whatever you are going through, trust and believe. It's going to work for your good. So the question of the day is, as they say on Instagram, right? Hashtag question of the day is, in the fire, what is God speaking to you? What is he saying? We, sometimes we get in the, in, in the place, Pastor, where we like, oh, God, I can't believe this. Like, that would be like a little more than me. Oh, God, I just can't believe this. This is happening. Like some of y'all was when some of your teams did win. Oh, God, I can't believe what is going on. What are we going to do? Right. Well, what is we going to do? But we need to ask God, God, what are you doing right now in my life? I'm in this fire and storm. What are you doing? Because you already know that God is with you. And if you know, I'm telling you, he is with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. But what is God speaking to you in the fire? And then number two is, what posture do you have in the fire? Okay. Most of you group boys, they weren't laying down. When they got in the fire, they wasn't laying down like, all right, well, it's, it's a gun out of y'all. We, we done this a wrap. No. They were standing firm. What is your posture while you were in the fire? Amen. That's right. What are you doing? I mean, a Pastor brought a message and he was talking about, you know, don't get off the boat. <laughs> right? Because we went to jump ship, right? Oh, yeah. Somehow, like, I'm out of here. Yeah, you okay? Even Cause a mutiny and then a bad shit. <laughs> That's what we do sometimes in our walk. But we have to have a posture. We have to think about the things that God has brought us through. If He brought you through that, you think He can bring you through this? Right. What is your posture? And trust and believe that the enemy is on the side of my way. Because the thing is, He wants to kill and destroy you. That's his job. So the moment we start slipping, he starts tripping. Every single time. The moment you start thinking things that are not of God, or you start thinking that God's not going to do what he's saying he's going to do, that's when he's like, with his friends, and I call him his homeboys, he's like, come on, guess what? Camille is weak right 
right now, y'all. Let's get it. Let's start pulling stuff from her memory and her past and bring that back to her reminder. You see what happened there? And you know, that happened. This is going to happen. Because that's what the enemy does. He calls on things and memories that from your past that are trying to destroy you and your walk today. We forget about the enemy. Okay? We forget how powerful, not as powerful as God, but we forget how he is and how he works. He will destroy your life if you let him. Amen. That's right. He will. That's right. He will destroy your life if you let him. Because he has demons. We don't talk about them very often. Okay, they are their spirits, hitchhiking spirits. They waiting. Oh, yeah. They are waiting. You let one come into your house. You let that enemy come into your house, they're going to call another one. Right. Guess what? It's a problem, y'all. Bring to bring more. That's in the word right there. That is what the enemy's job is. So we have to be very wise because we are no match for the enemy. But with the power and the authority of Jesus Christ, we can. Surrender to God. He's waiting. 
waiting on you. He is waiting on you. And if we will allow God to move and allow the Holy Spirit to move within us, we can see the amazing works of God. But we have to let him. See, that's one thing I love about God is that he lets us have choices, right? He ain't going to make you do nothing. Now, he might allow some things to happen so you should do something that will point you in the right direction on your journey. But you got to make a choice in the fire. You have to decide what you are going to do, what's your posture going to be, how are you going to react to the fire. That is your choice. You have to. Me and Camille talk all the time. We can just be talking. We be doing more talking than we do practicing, okay? We be talking. <laughs> we talk, but we always encourage each other. And I tell her, I'm like, man, look, we got to trust and believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. Stand on that. Period. We do not know how God is going to turn things around, but we want his will, not our will. His way, not our will. desire what he wants for our life. So life will come with challenges. That's a given. Has any of anybody here never had a challenge before in their life? Ever? You can talk to little kids and they tell you they have some challenges. Kids are having problems right now during the pandemic with school. And their own personal lives dealing with depression and anxiety because of this. But none of us are challenge free, right? None of us are storm free. None of us are fire free, right? right? But God is bigger. So if you're experiencing a fire, a storm, a challenge, whatever it is, there is nothing impossible for our God. Nothing. At all. Okay? Nothing. I've seen God heal people. I'm like, wow. He did that. I've seen God turn people's financial situations around like, wow. And I, I'm always using Camille, even Camille, even with her job. Wow. I, I could have wrote that better than anybody. Because God just be writing stuff. He just be writing our story. And I'm like, wow, God, you really did that. But she was going through a fire. And she had to trust God. Amen. How am I going to pay my mortgage? And sometimes you can't rely on other folk to even help you financially. Listen, okay. I was in a situation where I had some of my friends and they was like, cricket, 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 cricket. Wait, wait a minute, y'all got money? What the heck is going on? God's like, don't worry about it, sweetheart. I got you. Don't worry about them. I got you. So don't give up on God. To do exceedingly and abundantly more than what we ask or think. Yes. More than what we ask or think. Yes. Find God in the fire. Serve God in the fire. Yes. Think about a waiter in a restaurant. They're always waiting and serving and waiting and serving. That's what we are to do as believers. While we are waiting on God, on. we need to serve Him. Yes. Don't stop. Worship God. Get on your knees and worship God. 
reverence him. Lay before him in your home and worship God. You know, the Bible talks about some of these things only come out through prayer and fasting, right? Praying. Really? You want to hear a word from God? Give it up. If you got medical conditions, you make some adjustments. But if you want to hear from God and you go into a situation you ain't heard from Him, some of those things come out through prayer and fasting. You've got to do it. Give it up. So, know that all things, and I'm talking about all, as old people say, all, in the middle of all, on the outside of all, all things work together for the good and then that love of the Lord and that are called according to his purpose. All things. All right. Remember that. All things. Yeah. Those little things, those big things, those things that doctors can't figure out. All things. Yeah. God will work out on your behalf, but you have to surrender to him and believe. Don't let the enemy throw you off track. Believe. Believe, believe that God is working things out for you. And I want to sing a song before um, before I end. It talks about my soul is anchored in the Lord. And that's where your soul needs to be today. So your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Right? That's what your soul is. Your mind, your will, and your emotions, your experiences, the things that you've gone through. All of those things. Your soul should be anchored in God no matter what happens. Know that God is still in control. And so in our lives, storms will come, right? The song says, if the storms don't cease, if the winds keep on raging in my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you, God. As I sing this so you can just go ahead and, and think about God, how he's done so much for you. And just remember that his love is everlasting. Yes, yes, yes. Storms keep on raging in my life. It's a time just hard to tell the night from day. Still, that hope that lies within is real as I keep.
the midst of the fire because if we draw close to God, he will draw close to us. She admonished us to surrender to God, to tap out to God, to be counted out. Surrender to God. All to you, I hope. She, she admonished us to serve God in the midst of the fire. Yeah. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. But I want to let somebody know that serving the Lord will pay off right now. It pays to serve the Lord. It doesn't cost to serve the Lord. It pays to serve the Lord. Worship and praise God in the fire. Worship and praise God in the fire. I've been through in some of the prisons ministering and seeing men locked up doing life. Praise is that right there? Praising God in the fire. I believe there's somebody today, this message is for you. The scripture says, for we know that all things work together for good for them who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. You have to know today that you call according to God's purpose. And you may have some wounds, you may have some self-inflicted wounds. Where you have been directing the cause of your trouble. Some of us in a place where we're under attack by the enemy. And as the preacher said, somebody is in a place where God wants us to learn something from him. Whatever your situation is today, it's time to make a decision. The, the Hebrew boy that she was preaching about. When the Lord showed up in the fire, they didn't even smell like smoke. <clears throat> Nothing on them was burnt. And even the enemy who threw them in there said, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's happening here? I put three in the fire, now I see four. <clears throat> and the four would look like the Son of God. Wherever you are, I want to let you know that God has a plan for you. Right. Come to Jesus. Coming back to Jesus, surrendering all to Jesus, is what it's all about. Don't stay in the fire. I plead with someone today. Don't stay in the fire. While you're in the fire, make up your mind to serve the Lord. Those songs say, coming back to Jesus. Coming where the healing was spoke. Today to your day. If you're dialed into this service today, if you've heard the word of God, I know we're in the electronic age, and I understand that we're on Zoom and Facebook Live, and I understand that we can't see and just uh, embrace those that, that God may be touching, but if you are in need of a blessing today, you can get on the chat and say, please pray for me. to where you want to receive more for the first time. You can do that. So praise God. Praise the Father God in the name of Jesus. Oh, how we thank you for the word today. Thank you for blessing Pastor Amanda to share your word with love and joy saints of God here, there, and everywhere. Those are three keys in particular right now in this hour. Father, I pray for those that need a touch from you all today. Father, God, I began to weep when I saw specials name. Well, that's a special name. Father, in the name of Jesus, won't you bless her, God? Why she's in the fire? Stir up the gift, God, that you place down in her heart. In the name of Jesus, 
God, we pray for all of the saints today. Those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies. God, we're lifting up some body right now. In the name of Jesus, while the water is stirred and she's in the fire. God, you're working it out on her behalf. We say thank you. We thank you. We praise you, God. We pray to Sister Dorothy, Lord God, that you touch her body. That you would make her with a hole. That you would put a song back down the heart. That you would be able to vocalize and use that beautiful voice you've given her to continue to bring glory and honor to your name. We thank you, God. We pray for Sister Savannah today. As she ministers to your people, Father God, that you would bless her. That you would make ways out of no way. That you would do that which nobody else can do but you. Father, we pray for the Boots family today. Thank you, God. The bereaved families that connected with me, please, God, we pray for the saints today. Pray for Sister Yolanda, Sister Janice, Lord, down in Louisiana, God. You know the issue, you know the situation, you know the need, God, stretch out your hand. We pray for a fresh anointing in this place. New vision, new hope, new direction. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody that's going through on today, that's in the fire, God. We're going to praise you in the fire. We're going to magnify your name in the fire. Yes, Lord. Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you. We bless your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, send out your word and heal it today, Lord. Deliver us, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we pray as we, we, as we prepare to leave this place, but not your presence, God. Oh, God, let your anointing go with us today. Maybe from the church to our home, or from our office to the living room, or from the living room to the kitchen, let your anointing follow your people today. We pray in the mighty in the majesty of the name of Jesus. We give you glory, honor, and praise, Father. We pray uh, that you bless the tithe and offering box on the wall all of those uh, that are given in the house of the Lord for the upbuilding of your kingdom, anoint the, 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 the resources that come into the house of the Lord, that only you will be glorified. We bless you. We thank you. We magnify your name. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest rule and abide with us all henceforth now and forever. And Father, as we're closing, pray, we pray for Elder Jones, Pastor Jones, as he's in trouble in his knees today. Touch him now, Lord. Touch him, God, and reward him according to his faithfulness. God, we pray today. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Pray for Camille today. We thank you, Lord. We've been there and doing for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Thank you. Father, we bless you. We thank you. All the saints of God together with me say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's come up and give the Lord some praise today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm told Lauren is online today. Praise the Lord, Lauren. Let me God bless everyone. Press practice my three pointer. <laughs> Amen. God bless all the same today. Sister Dolores, God bless you. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you. Bless you. Mother Anthony, <laughs> Mother 9020A, God bless you. Is that you? Yeah, she's Mother, Mother 